And, and I love the direction that they're going in. I think I really do think that one day we're going to look back at two or three hundred dollars as a incredibly low stock price for this company. That might be five or ten years from now, but I, I am extremely bullish on this company long term, and I love this sixty-five dollar dip from highs. Well, I'll, as I see messages popping up, I'll try to answer them. That was a lot of messages actually. <laughs> Make your tweets uh, like six hundred. <laughs> So now it's gone into the hey guys so let's see and you can sort of read some of the comments there um all right we're gonna let's see so here we are um we're just uh leaving tesla headquarters and uh we just dropped a random pen at stanford or whatever uh we can clear that though and i don't know we can pick up i'll just uh whatever um ai end-to-end -end. Um, let's see how it does. So let's go. Yeah, we're not uh, well, let's see. Um, okay, so here we're kind of let's see, added to kind of random spot. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be pretty wobbly. So. <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's really smooth sailing in the car itself. Um, and here we're encountering some construction and the car is just uh, driving around the construction so it, it, it has never seen this construction before uh, well, it is near the headquarters but this construction is relatively new um, it's kind of hard to tell maybe from the live stream but the car is driving very smoothly uh, I think I will re re rely on others to uh, take this video, edit out the boring bits, and speed it up. <laughs> yeah, there's like some sort of random place here. Yeah, uh, yeah wherever, somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, hello, assassins, if you want to get me. Now is your chance. <laughs> you just need to be in Palo Alto. <laughs> like this, the assassin count is low in Palo Alto. <laughs> so we're just right. We're, uh, I should have just dropped a sort of random pin. We don't know where we're going really. Um, <laughs> just somewhere in Palo Alto. Um, but it's just also worth noting, and sure, you may want to actually sort of provide some com some commentary as well. Um, but we, we've got a, a test drive, you know, uh, FST twelve test drivers around the world. So we've got we've got people in, I think, like New Zealand and like Thailand and yeah. Norway, Japan, Japan, yeah. Every, everywhere. Because yeah. you, know, you should generalize the, the concept of driving is general. You don't need to like just do it in the U.S. You could do it everywhere simultaneously. Right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Just like a human um, can go travel to a country they've never been to before and rent a car and drive around. It'd be you know not, maybe not quite as good, as good as someone local, but you can still rent a car in, in you know foreign country and drive around. And, <laughs> and we just have like some students over there. That uh, one of them stumbled briefly into the road, and the car uh, drove around them. <laughs> a lovely day in California, um, the beautiful Stanford campus. <laughs> Playing a little uh, Four Seasons, and then figuring out well, what what is the high quality data versus. Uh, the pretty good data. Yeah, and once we have a model, we also ship those models in shadow mode to the cars, and then every time it disagrees with what the user did, yeah, exactly. then you can get the data back, and then, you know, kind of, that is more valuable than just collecting, you know, random data. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so it's, we, we feel good about actually having a, um, a, a very rapid virtuous cycle uh, where w when there is an intervention in the fleet um, that with that intervention automatically being uploaded uh, to the 
to training, um, being integrated with training, and then updating really just the the weights. Uh, so the the it's it's not the it's not the binary that's that's changing. It's the weight, or not the execution binary. It's the just really the weight. We have not programmed in the concept of traffic lights. So there's not like oh. The, this is a red light, this is a green light, and this is the traffic light position. We, we, we have that in the, the normal stack, but we do not have that in V12. This is just video, video training. Like I said, nothing but uh, neural nets. Um, and yet it, it knows which light applies to it. Um, and it stops at a red light, accelerates at a green light. Um, now, one of the sort of maybe slightly funny challenges we've had is that um, since the car is being trained on what humans do, uh, humans almost never stop fully at a stop, stop street. So when they get to a, a stop sign, humans actually almost never go to zero miles an hour. They, they may think they did, but usually they, they're doing at least um, a few miles an hour. Uh, at a stop, st coming up to a stop street. Um, sometimes, you know, people go faster than that, but uh, the uh, regulators are somewhat, in they're really quite insistent that we we go to uh, a complete, come to a complete stop at, um, at stop signs. <laughs> and um, when we looked at the data, uh, only 5% of the time do humans actually stop fully. Even, even lower than that, oh, like like, 0.5% so, of the time. 0.5%? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. So basically, pe people almost never fully stop at stop signs. So w we had to. Um, even if, even if you look at those data, it's like a lot of them come to a stop and on, they get on their phone or something. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's not just regular people doing the stops. Yeah, and like, they might like semi stop and then move a little bit and that kind of thing. So, so, so we had to like uh, pull the fleet for rare examples. <laughs> that less than one percent of the time when people actually come to a full stop and artificially train the system to stop at stop signs um at the insistence of the regulators like i said this is it's a little slow because uh we're driving around in basically rush hour mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh intervention sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's our first intervention because the car should be going straight. So for that intervention that we just had, um, the solution is essentially um, to feed the network a bunch more video of traffic lights. Um, so that was a that was a controlled left inner a, a control, controlled uh, left turn um, where there was green light for the left turn, but not a green light to go straight. Um, and so we'll feed it a bunch of video of. Uh, control left turns and uh, then it'll work. There's the smoothness of the control, uh, the, the car, the, just how smoothly the, the car is behaving is it's hard to convey I think on camera, but it's, it's just super smooth. Yeah, yeah, you have to feel it really. So now it's making a left turn. So it's, it's gotten itself into the left turn lane. Uh, again, we've never programmed in the notion of a turn lane or anything like that. Or even a lane. Oh, we, we, yeah, we, we don't even know what, a, we've never, there's, there's no line that says, uh, think that it has, there's no line of code about traffic lanes at all. All right, we've arrived at this random pin. I might try to pull over, let's see if it does. Sometimes it does pull over. Yeah, so it, it kind of, so this is, yeah, so this is pretty cool. So the car just, just pulled over to the side of the road and, um, and the passenger should get off and yeah, and, and parked. So it would it it knows at the end of its destination based on the video that's received that at the end of the, at the end of the destination you pull over to the side and park. Yeah, and it so, also gets the exact pin location in addition to the navigation route. So you know, it just the pin is close. It's a good spot spot here. It puts over here, but in park, big parking lots where there might not be any map, yeah, it should just go as close to the pin as possible. Right. Exactly. So here we are in Palo Alto driving on Pure AI. Let's see, uh, it's headed back to Tesla Global Engineering Headquarters in Palo Alto. I've 
you know, situations where like there's a parade or a crowded situation or whatever, you know, yeah. a lot of pedestrians for whatever reason. Yeah. We want to be, you know, safe, but also confident and be confident yeah. that in fact, we don't want to be too skittish and like hit the brakes all the time. Yeah. If it's like unnecessary, you know. Yeah, but it, like, like, so, um, in, like it's winter basically in New Zealand, and so we have like the yeah, snowy, snow day, snowy day. Con conditions there that we can train in. That's a dry uh, bicyclist. Uh, it's a little tight. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so this, yeah, this is a tricky one. So this is turning left onto Middlefield in Palo Alto with where visibility is not great. So, yeah, so it's like, the you know, cars come from both sides at pretty high speeds. But, uh, did it. Yeah, no problem. Great. So an un unprotected left onto a high speed road, fairly high speed road. No problem. Yeah, even the set speed is just like no, set to some max value. Like yeah, exactly. It's like it currently set to eighty five, but it's the it's it's ignoring the set speed. It's it's driving at what would be intuitively the right speed for people to drive at. Yeah, you need a lane change to get into the camp, the yep. faster lane. Exactly. So there's two lanes here. Uh, there's a lot more cars in that lane fewer cars in this lane and it's going straight so it picked the lane with the fewest cars. The vehicle following it typically yeah. you know the distance and the velocity and everything acceleration there's nothing here and it's able to follow the vehicles. Yep exactly it's not no explicit distance that's programmed in for how close you should be behind a car it's again just a video training. Yeah it's intuitive you know like at yeah, this, just intuitively. At these speeds and this right. is kind of the right following speed. Like what would humans generally do yeah. uh, and it picks like a reasonable follow distance and does that. Yeah, the nice thing is, you know, for bad weather conditions, for example, it will like, automatically increase the speed. Yep. Um, and you or decrease the speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. increase the distance. I mean, yeah, so distance, speed. yeah. Yeah, this is a fairly tricky flight. So you got, you got two, uh, you know, con controlled lefts and, and two straight, basically two, two turn lanes and two straight lanes. <laughs> and it's sort of like merge after this turn, which is also interesting because, you know, it's like turn and merge simultaneously. Yeah, it's got to, exactly, it's got to turn and merge uh, simultaneously, which is tricky. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yes. Real smooth merge. Now, one of the interesting things about sort of pure AI driving is that it actually doesn't need a map at all. So we could uh, delete the navigation system, simply give it a GPS point and say, get to this GPS point somehow. We're not going to tell you how. It's, it, you could say like, you see that building in the distance, go there. And it would it would do that even with no, it would just, it might make some, you know, get, get to a go down a road that's a dead end and then have to reverse out. But it would basically be able to do what a human can do. Uh, where if you said, please go to, you know, you know, yeah, that, point that, yeah, point, point, at, point at something and go, say, go there. So that's going into the parking lot. The, there is no explicit map for the parking lot, parking lot. So now it is just, just trying to get to a GPS point. <laughs> yeah, they're putting new 
superchargers here at the cars. Okay. So it got to the point and that's it. All right, so that was the FSD 12 beta drive, um, super smooth, um, one intervention, which we'll fix with a bit more training data. Um, and um, otherwise, uh, I really, I would say like, you know, if this was a Uber driver, pretty much apart from that one intervention, five star. Yep. So. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in. That's really just part of what they're doing, right? The Cybertruck is big, but energy storage is growing like a weed for them. Full service driving, it's 15 grand or a subscription, which will probably make them more money. So what I always say about Tesla, for the bearish, the, that hurts the bearish case, the pipeline. The things they have in the pipeline should scare every bear out there. And I love the direction that they're going in. I think, I really do think that one day we're gonna look back at two or $300 as a incredibly low stock price for this company. That might be five or 10 years from now, but I, I am extremely bullish on this company long-term and I love this $65 dip from highs.